everybody. Welcome to Curriculum Night. I'm Melissa Gaffney, and I am lucky enough to have the privilege of teaching your students this year for language arts and social studies. Um, this video is going to focus just on language arts and a few things that we do for grading, um, talk about how you can help your student when it comes to literacy skills. Um, so that's what you're here for for the next five to 10 minutes. I'll start with a little bit about me. Um, I am a duck, a very proud duck. In fact, I got my undergraduate degree there. Um, I can't promise that I'm not trying to brainwash any of your students to go there. Um, I received my master's in teaching from Seattle University, go Red Hawks. I think I have a thing for birds. Um, and in the time that I am not in the classroom, um, I have a wonderful family. Uh, these are slightly outdated pictures as my children are wearing masks in school, but my daughter is a fifth grader and my son is a second grader. Um, so that keeps me pretty busy. Uh, when I have spare time, uh, I like to vacation. One of my favorite places is the Oregon coast. I'm an Oregonian. Uh, I'm a Girl Scout troop leader and I am a soccer mom. So that's a little bit about me. I've been teaching here at Islander Middle School. This is my ninth year. Um, and before that, I worked in a, a variety of nonprofit roles for Girl Scouts of Western Washington. So in language arts, I'll kind of break it up into what we're going to read and what we're going to write. Um, we're going to read a variety of texts this year. Right now, we're in our short story narrative unit. Um, so we'll be reading a lot of fictional pieces and kind of looking at elements of the story. Um, later on, our first class novel will be The Giver by Lois Lowry, one of my personal favorite books. Um, it's a great way to introduce kids to um, inferring in a text and sort of uh, like dystopian world. It's um, such a great unit. Um, other novels that we'll read all together include March Volume 1. It's a graphic novel and autobiography of John Lewis's early life. And then Red Scarf Girl, which touches on the um, cultural revolution in 1960s and 70s China. So we have a lot of really fantastic novels that we're gonna be reading together as a class. Um, something else that I wanna make sure that uh, students are doing, and I will also give um, structured class time for is independent reading. I know as soon as kids get a little bit older and schedules become a little bit more full, um, reading is one of those things that can drop off for a lot of students. And I just wanna emphasize how important reading is especially if you even want to read to or with them. I think a lot of people think once kids get to middle school that they don't like being read to, but think about how much we love audiobooks or podcasts. Um, it's a great way to engage the listening part of your brain while you're still reading and enjoying storytelling. So my suggestion is for kids to read about 20 minutes a day. Um, that's not a requirement. It's just a suggestion um, because they do set independent reading goals. The goals are supposed to be challenging, but achievable um, and really to meet to be proficient for sixth grade, they need to read a variety of genres. So um, not just, you know, if we got a real historical fiction lover, we're gonna try to branch out a little bit and try to find some other genres that we enjoy um, in addition to reading multiple texts. So, you know, for some students that might be three texts, for some students that might be nine. Um, everybody is different. So the goals are adjustable, but they should be challenging for each student. Um, and then we're going to kind of try to build a reading community. Students will be sharing what they read um, through book talks, either in person or on our platform Flipgrid, um, connecting with me or other students in class. So um, that's kind of what we're looking for, for independent reading, where students are having a lot of choice in what they read and flexibility in how they are showing what they're reading to me and to their classmates. So that's a little bit about the reading for language arts. For writing, we will be writing in all three major modes this year. Um, narrative, which is storytelling. So we'll be writing short fictional pieces. Expository, which is your sort of traditional research or informative piece. Um, and then argumentative, where they will take a position on a side, develop a claim, support it with research and evidence, um, 
those are kind of the three major modes that we'll be working in this year. I'm really trying to build in more time for revising, editing, feedback, as that's all a really important part of the writing process. And you may have heard a little bit about grading for equity. Um, grading for equity is something that a lot of teachers here at Islander Middle School are, are implementing this year. Um, and I'm hoping that it's not unfamiliar to most elementary school parents as you are coming from a standards-based world anyway, where uh, a grade mark will be anywhere from a one to a four. Um, and what this is trying to do is really kind of communicate exactly where students are in their learning. Sometimes when we see an A or a C on a report card, it's hard to know exactly what they do and do not know. So when you start to see things on Skyward, it will be broken down by actual standard. So how are they when it comes to using text evidence to support their opinion? How are they when it comes to writing a topic sentence to organize their paragraph? Um, you'll be able to see those broken down um, and that will hopefully give you a more accurate picture of where students are at when it comes to mastering the, the content in class. And then I think, you know, me as a parent, what I always want to know when I'm going to a back to school night or a curriculum night is what can I do at home to help? Um, as I mentioned before, reading aloud, I, again, I can't emphasize how much kids actually really do enjoy that. Um, I know maybe it was a tradition or a, a routine that you built in, in those primary years, but it's still super important. So maybe try that out again. If, if you had lost touch with it, I'm going to the library. We have a great library here at school. Um, but the King County library, Mercer Island branch is awesome too. The Seattle branch is great. Um, take a field trip to different libraries. Um, Family book clubs, maybe you read all the same book and, and talk about what you're reading or just talk about what you're reading. <laughs> it doesn't have to be the same book, um, but I think uh, just talking about literature, having your kids see that you are reading too um, is a great way to have conversations about books. I think word games are super important and it's a really fun way to learn new vocabulary, practice spelling. So games like Scrabble, Bananagrams, crossword puzzles. Um, those are all super fun and ways to really engage the literacy part of your brain. Talk to them about what they're reading. What are they reading for independent reading? What kind of reading are you doing in class? Um, and then listening to audiobooks in the car is one of my favorite ways to sort of sneak it in. Um, then I don't have to worry about my kids fighting about what's on the radio. Um, so those are some tips that I have. And then, uh, oops, didn't mean to go that far. Uh, that's all pretty much that I have for my presentation. So hopefully you can catch me in social studies, talking a little bit about what's there. And um, I will see you there. It's been so great uh, having your kids. And um, thanks, for, thanks for being here tonight.